Good morning, everyone. Morning. Um, welcome. Do we have any announcements from the congregation before we go to the bulletin? Camden, what you got? What? All right. He had, he had one of those things. All right. Uh, if there's no if there's no announcements, um, we'll just look in the back of the bulletin. You'll see what what we're up to here. And um, if you have any questions, yeah, email me or Pastor Ed, and we'll try to get you the answers. If there's uh, no more, we have our Advent candle lighting with Jamie and Pastor Ed. If ever there was a year we need Advent, this is the year. We hardly know how to describe the year we've lived through. We hesitate to reflect on all the mess around us in 2020. All we know is that nothing seems right. Nothing seems like it used to be. Nothing. We need Advent. The prophet Isaiah cried out for us, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down to make your name known so that nations might Tremble at your presence. So tear through the mess, God, and come down to us again. We long to be your people, a people of hope. We light this first candle as a sign of our hope. Hope that you can meet us, even in the mess of our world. Hope that you still see us, though we feel we are lost in the rubble. Let this light be the guide that brings us to Emmanuel once more. O oh, come, O oh, come. Amen. Our call to worship is from Psalm 24. <clears throat> if you'd like to follow along, it's in your bullet. The earth and everlasting on it belong to the Lord. The world and all its people belong to him. We are his good people. We try to follow God. We go to the God of Jacob for help. Gates, lift up your hands. Open ancient doors, and the glorious king will come in. The Lord all-powerful is that king. He is the glorious king. And our first hymn this morning is Sing We Now of Christmas. If you'd like to follow along, that's on page 139, or it's on number 139 in your hymnal.
first reading will be out of the Old Testament from the book of Isaiah in chapter 7. I'll start with verse 10. If you'd like to follow along, you'll have to find it yourself because I don't have the page numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so Isaiah chapter 7, verse 10. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, ask the Lord your God for a sign whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David. It is not enough to try, is it not enough to try the patience of men? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son. And he will call and will call him Emmanuel. He will eat curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. But before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, the land of the two kings you dread will be laid waste. The Lord will the Lord will bring on you and on your people and on the house of your father a time unlike any sense since Ephraim broke away from Judah. He will bring the king of Assyria. I read one verse too far. Matthew is my next reading from the New Testament from chapter 1. And I'll be reading verses 18 through 25. Matthew 1, 18. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came to know, before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child, and she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So now we share our joys and concerns. This is just a reminder that during the congregation's sharing of joys and concerns, we'll be turning the sanctuary microphone off to protect the privacy of those in the meeting house. As always, if you have something about which you'd like to have others join you in prayer, you can contact Pastor Ed or pretty much anyone connected with the church, and we'll put you on the prayer chain and lift your concerns to the Lord. In the meantime, please join us in an attitude of prayer, and we'll have a few moments of silence before we turn the sound back up and join together in the Lord's Prayer.
<clears throat> Let's pray together. Even if we can't gather in person, even if some Christmas traditions have had to go, even if we might not get to hug family and friends or sing carols beside each other, even if Christmas cheer is harder this year, above all, we remember your promise. Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, you are the light in the darkness and the hope for the world, and yet everywhere we turn, we see people clinging to darkness, where response to disease divides us into haves and have-nots, and where deep loneliness sits alongside community. In the here and now, in the when and not yet, remind us that we are one with our neighbors nearby and afar. We are the holders of hope, the bearers of the promise of the kingdom of God incarnate through us. May God of all forgive us for our sins and renew us in his extravagant love, radical hope, and abundant joy. Listening God, come into the darkness of today's world, to the places where you once walked among us but are now places of despair and conflict and occupation. Help us to be a voice of peace, to speak out against oppression, to share the real Bethlehem with others this Advent. Loving God, come into the darkness of our community, to people living with fear and worry, to the people whose Advent is not full of joy, to those needing support. Open our eyes to the situations all around us that we don't see and open our minds to the ways that we can respond. Holy Lord, someday the burden of today's toil, the goings and comings, the successes and failures, the hopes and near despairs, will all be transformed into blessed reality. Hope will be no more. But until that day comes, we thank you that we live during a difficult phase in which hope is still the beginning of the beginning of the day. That day is still waiting to be born. So in the meantime, from the mingled light and shadow of hope, we greet you, Lord God, through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So due to our uh, um, recommendations from the state uh, about uh, not singing in public, we're going to, um, you know, specifically mention on, uh, on the, the stream that, the, that everybody is separate and distant and we're not supposed to sing. Um, so uh, we're probably going to mumble together. I, I know these people. I can't, like, absolutely shut them up. That's not the point. But we're going to be very aware that uh, of how we're interacting with this music. Uh, frankly, I forgot to uh, get the, the music up on the screen, so if you're watching this live, I apologize that you're not able to follow along with the lyrics uh, as easily as usual. I will put them up later. But for now, we're going to follow along with this song called When God is a Child, and that's number 109. Star that shines in the night, leading us on till the morning is bright. When God is a child, there's joy in our song. The last shall be first, and the weak shall be strong, and none shall be. circles the earth. 
there's joy in our song. The last shall be first, and the weak shall be strong, and none shall be Thank you, everyone. And now we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to come and move among us and to prepare us to uh, hear his word and to shape us to be more like Jesus. So let's pray together. Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, we recognize your work among us today. Uh, frankly, Spirit, I just love this time of year because I think people are more willing to hear your whisper. They're more willing to recognize that, that, that this time, as we prepare for Christmas, isn't just about getting stuff, but that we are to announce the good news to the world, that, that we are your children and that you have made a way for us to be restored to you through this little child from Bethlehem. So Lord, we, we pray that we would cooperate with the work of the Spirit, that we would listen to those uh, whispers and nudges, that we would reach out and minister to people um, in your grace. If there is anything that's in this time that's merely human, we pray, Lord, that that would be forgotten and only that which remains from the word would take root in us. Help us to grow and be established in you, Lord. And so may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You know, a big part of our challenge uh, to our lives during this pandemic is dealing with the unexpected. We come to learn that delays are now normal, that getting two places to do events sometimes just isn't possible, Either we're in quarantine, or someone we're supposed to be with is in quarantine, or the event has been closed down uh, to government regulations, or it's been moved online and we don't know what the social media address is. How are we supposed to prepare for Christmas with so many unexpected events keep occurring? Well, it's life, y'all. That's how life is. I think more unexpected events are... Uh, less ignorable now, but dealing with the unexpected is not a new thing. As I was reading about preparing for the unexpected, I found an article on parents.com, which gave a checklist for preparing for the arrival of a baby. And it clicked. That's what we do every year for Advent. We prepare for the arrival of the baby. And so I'm going to borrow that topic. And I'm going to use that to navigate our Advent adventures together. So how do we get ready for his arrival? So to get you ready for his arrival, there's two things I want us to look at. And the first is in our Old Testament reference. This is in Isaiah chapter 7, 
verses 10 through 16. Isaiah chapter 7, verses 10 through 16. Now, just to give you guys a little bit of background while you're looking that up, this is uh, about a king, Ahaz. And um, Ahaz is the king of Judah, and he's trying to fight a particular guy, and he doesn't feel like he's doing well. And so Ahaz has not been like the greatest king ever. And so he, he kind of falls into um, despair, and he just doesn't think he's, he's going to do well. And so um, Isaiah, the prophet, goes and talks to Ahaz and basically gives him a message, saying, you have reason for hope. You know, all is not lost. Don't give up. And Ahaz just frankly doesn't believe him. So that's where we pick this up at verse 10. This is Isaiah having a conversation saying, you know, this is what the Lord, who is speaking through me, is saying to you right now, Ahaz, verse 10. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. He thinks he's being super spiritual because he doesn't want to do that. Now, the prophet of God is like directly transmitting God's word to him. So Ahaz is, in effect, having a conversation with God and has the gall to say, oh no, I couldn't possibly. Verse 13, then Isaiah said, hear now, you house of David. That's a reference to you, him being king. Is it not enough to try the patience of men? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. He will eat curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. But before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, the land of the two kings you dread will be laid waste. So the first thing to get us ready for his arrival, I think that we see from this Old Testament reference, is that we have got to be ready to receive. <coughs> We've got to be ready to receive. Verses 11, 12, and 13, this is a really clear message that God wants to bless. He specifically wants to bless Ahaz and let Ahaz know, I've got this. It's going to be fine. <coughs> and Ahaz, frankly, isn't having it, doesn't believe him. He's not ready to receive. And I don't know about you, but I know that there have been times when I've felt like, boy, Lord, I don't want to frustrate you. I don't want to, you know, cause you consternation, but here's what I'm dealing with. And then part of me is like, well, wait a minute. This is God. This is infinite God. Can we frustrate God? Well, apparently we can. Because God's response through a like, dude, you're not only going to cheese off all of the, the people that you talk to, but you're going to cheese off God too. Just let me bless you, God says to Ahaz. You see, God's blessings are on God's schedule, not ours. God knows what he's doing, even though we may not be able to recognize it. If you jump down to the end of this uh, section, um. The, the verse, you, you said you added, you read one too many. I'll incorporate that. So let's look at verses 16 and 17. But before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, the land of the two kings you dread will be laid to waste. The Lord will bring on you and your people and on the house of your father a time unlike any since Ephraim broke away from Judah. He will bring the king of Assyria. Look, judgment is going to come. But don't you worry about it. Ahaz, I've got this. In a time shorter than you're really prepared for, the, the, the little problem that you think is so awful right now is going to vanish. It won't even matter. That's the good news. The bad news is there's a much worse problem coming down the pike. A series is going to show up, and then, then you're in a lot of trouble. But that's not going to be on you. That's not a thing that you, Ahaz, need to deal with. So I don't know about you, but one of the things that... Um, a lesson that has been really hammered into my head recently as I've been working on this house is that I do not need to know how to solve every problem that is with the house all at once. I don't have to do that. 
because I don't have a way to deal with all of the problems all at once. I can only deal with the one thing that's in front of me at the time. So I only have to deal with one problem, and that's the only thing that I need to focus on is whatever happens to be in front of me at the time. So therefore, if God is placing something in your life that is unexpected and frustrating, I get it. And you can talk to God about how frustrating it is. But let God be God. Let God bless you. The problem, the frustrating, the unexpected thing that's in front of you that you feel is blocking what you want to do might be the very thing that's God using to get you where he needs you to be so that he can bless you in a way you can't even imagine. So it's okay. Be ready to receive. The next thing is be steady in your response. Be steady in your response. And for that, we're going to look at our New Testament passage. This is Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. This is the, the portion of the text, the, the beginning of the Christmas story, as it were, in Matthew. This is about the birth of Jesus Christ. Um, this is often read during Advent. But I thought there are some things that we might want to look at it that maybe we don't often see. So this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save the people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will be with child, and will give birth to a son, and then we'll call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife, but he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. We're called to be steady in how we respond to whatever God has for us. Joseph, in verses 18 and 19, gets unexpected news, and his first response is to retreat. This is too much. I'm, I'm not going to make a stink, but I just don't think I can stay in this situation. I, I get that response. That's a pretty normal human response. But, what a wonderful word there. Verses 20 and 21, he gets a reminder from a messenger. This is unexpected to you, yes, but not unexpected to God. Don't be afraid. When things happen that you're not planning for, it's not necessarily catastrophe. It's just different. It's just not something you planned for. But be, just because you didn't plan for it doesn't mean it wasn't planned. Verses 22 and 23. God has plans that we don't know about. Just waiting to be discovered. You know, there's a, a verse that's uh, out of Jeremiah that that a lot of Christians quote. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to give you a hope and a future and to prosper you. And the people who are really into whole, the, the whole prosperity gospel doctrine thing love that verse. But they tend to interpret that verse through this lens of everything is going to be peachy for me. <laughs> Frankly, some of the plans that God has for you might not be peachy for you. When I was a young man, I used to have a folder. And in this folder, I kept what I thought my future life was going to be like. I mean, and I started this folder, I think, when I was 17. So I, I found a, I was on tour with one of my singing groups. And I, we were driving through this little town, and I found a house that I just fell in love with as we're driving by. And I made the driver stop. What a graceful director that was to put up with me. I made him stop, and I made one of the other girl singers 
go stand on the porch. And I took a picture of her on the porch of that house because I knew that someday I was going to marry a pretty wife and she was going to be standing on the porch of a house. Wasn't going to marry that girl. Wasn't going to buy that house. But the idea was really clear. So I took that picture and I put it in my folder. And I did that with all kinds of things. I had recipes in there. I had house plans in there. I had an article about a prototype for a thing that was now called the minivan, which wasn't around when I got the article. And then I met Jamie. And I was smitten right away and thought, I need to do everything I can to convince this girl to marry me. So I shoulder my folder. Only girl I've ever shown the folder to. And I went through everything in it. And I just said, do you think you could see yourself in this life? She's like, yeah, I, I could do that. And I'm thinking, okay then, let's get a schedule. Let's do this, right? And I was thinking, okay, I'm going to join the military and I'm going to be a career military. And I had my life all planned out. And that is not what happened. But the unexpected has been awesome. I have been blessed in ways I could never have imagined. We need to be ready to receive whatever the plans are that God has for us, even though they're not what we planned. Verses 24 and 25 remind us that we choose to trust. And we make choices in response to that trust. When Joseph woke up, verse 24, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife, but he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Yeshua. Variation of the word Joshua. You know what that word means? God saves. Emmanuel means God with us. How does God save? shows up with us in the person of Jesus. I don't know about you, I have goosebumps everywhere just thinking about how God planned that, orchestrated that in ways that we thought, well, that's a catastrophe, that's terrible, that's awful, that's not the news I would have wanted to hear, but God knows what he's doing. So I want to leave you with four steps, four steps to prepare for his arrival, to get you ready for his arrival. And frankly, these are right out of that parents.com article. The first one is take your vitamins. Take your vitamins. So what I mean by that is be aware of what you're taking into your mind and your spirit this season. There's a whole lot of stuff that we could put into our brains and not all of it is beneficial. Take your vitamins. Be aware of what you're taking in. The second one, choose a healthcare provider. Again, this is right off of parents.com, right? Choose a healthcare provider. And by that, I mean that we are to carefully consider how and where you will feed your soul. Now, it's not like I am specifically advocating, so I'm talking to you who are at home right now. I'm not saying you need to get yourself into church. That's not the point at all. Because I'm looking out here, and, and of course, because we're all being socially distant, the numbers are lower than normal. But how are you feeding yourself? What steps are you taking to intentionally feed your soul? Be aware of that. Choose a health care provider, a spiritual health care provider. Number three, schedule a checkup. And what I mean by schedule a checkup is to bring others in on your plans. It's certainly one thing to say, okay, New Year's coming up. I have a New Year's resolution. I'm going to do this. But if you don't ever tell anybody what that is, you are far more likely to let yourself off the hook, yeah? I have made a New Year's resolution years ago that I still bring people in on. And that New Year's resolution was, I will make no more New Year's resolutions. And I tell people that. So they know, well, are you doing anything special for the new year? Yeah, I'm just going to try and keep on keeping on because that was what I resolved to do. Whew, decades ago now. Bring others in on your plans. And then finally, the last one is start taking tests. Now, of course, the parents.com means like, look, as soon as you recognize, mom, that you're pregnant, you should probably start to go get your testing done because there's a whole bunch of things that the healthcare 
people want you to check up for. <coughs> I'm going to say, look, I'm going to ask you to start double checking your ideas. If you're going to be making plans on how you are going to walk with Jesus in 2021, ask others, is this reasonable? Is this affordable? <laughs> is this doable? We are congregationalists, right? We recognize that Jesus is the head of the church and there's nobody else between him and us. I am just another church member who happens to be the guy who talks about the Bible stuff a lot. But that's not, I'm not in any spiritual authority over anybody. Not even me. Because Jesus is the head of the church. Where the congregational part comes in is, if we're going to be listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, we recognize by faith that the Spirit speaks through us as a group, not just to me as an individual. It's kind of, it's, I don't know, it's almost anti-American. <laughs> because we're so, pull yourself up by your own bootstraps and, you know, figure it out and get it done. And No. We are the people of God. We are the family of God, like Rick said earlier, and we've learned that we can rely upon one another. I absolutely depend upon you, our congregation, to show me my blind spots and to say, you know, pastor, you might want to consider this. Uh, that doesn't make me a great pastor. That makes us a good people. I'm, I'm so grateful for that. And, and we do that with each other. So listen to each other. Share your ideas. Hey, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? The Bible says in the Old Testament to seek godly counsel. So do that. Take your vitamins. Choose a health care provider. Schedule a checkup. Start taking your tests. Get yourselves ready for the, array, uh, for the arrival of the baby Jesus because he's coming. Christmas is coming. And more importantly, Jesus is returning. So be ready for that. Let's pray together. Lord God, we are thankful for the opportunity that Advent provides for us to wait and to consider. And all too often, Advent kind of gets wrapped up in this, I don't know, weird mishmash of pre-Christmas. Advent isn't pre-Christmas, but Advent isn't very marketable, and pre-Christmas is. So we'll go to the stores, and we'll start to hear Christmas music played, and people starting to wish each other happy holidays and Merry Christmas and whatever. And all of that is great, but help us remember, Lord, that that's not the point. That there will come a day when you will crack the sky right down the middle. And we, every eye will see you, and every knee will bow. Help us to prepare for that presence. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. As we are getting ready to close our service, um, let's ponder, I wonder as I wonder. I couldn't resist that. Uh, that was, that's in uh, page 117 in our hymnal. I wonder as I wonder. <laughs>
Jesus had wanted for any three things, a star in the sky or a bird on the wing, for all of God's angels in heaven for to sing. He surely could have had it, cause he was the Then we sing verse 4 again. We sing verse 1 as verse 4. There we go. I wonder as I wander out under the sky How Jesus the Savior did come forth to die I'm four or three people like you and like I I wonder as I wander Now let's consider how we can support the ministries of this congregation as well as other ministries that you at home might be using to help you through this time. I just want to remind you to give generously of time and talent as well as treasure. So let's just pray about that and then we'll sing our doxology. Lord God, you are our Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider. And yet, you use us to do that work. It's in the same kind of way that, that if we're prompted to pray about a situation, we pray about it, and then we're supposed to do it. Lord, feed the hungry. And then we give to the food pantry. Lord, I, I, I'm just praying about so-and-so who seems awfully lonely. And then we go visit. Use us to meet needs, Lord. And I thank you for the faithfulness of the people who have been doing so here in this particular congregation. May that continue, Lord, not for the money's sake, but for the giving's sake. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above you. And then our final song for socially distant contemplation is God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. Um, that's on number 140. So let's think about this one together, shall we? God rest you merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay.
as we're dismissed, I'm going to read from uh, the, the little prayer that's printed actually at the bottom of uh, page uh, 140 that one of our congregational ministers, uh, Reverend Schimpf, wrote, just the end of it. Covenant-keeping God of the ages, we praise you in the gracious name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit this day and every day, bringing us tidings of comfort and joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're dismissed, everyone. Thank you.